Yes, either follows. So look, we are all familiar with the design of a piston, and know that they are fitted with rings, right? And so why suggest we try making an engine that would work on pistons with no rings, and discuss what purpose they serve in the process? Let's go. Now, for an engine to properly function, there has to be decent compression. The rings are what provide it, and if we are to remove the piston rings, in that case we need to minimize the gap between the cylinder wall and the piston. And if we try that with a piston like this, well, the cylinders and the pistons have different thermal expansion rates, with the pistons being made from aluminum and the engine block out of iron. And so that can easily result in the engine seizing. Our idea is to make life easier for these pistons and make casing for them out of iron. The idea is to equalize the thermal expansion to prevent the clearances from getting out of whack. Okay, let's prepare the pistons, the liners, and combine them. Integrate one into the other. Let's go. So look here, we are machining the pistons so that they are a tight fit for those casings. They're going to be pressed in, we'll need to do some heating and cooling. And as we all know, pistons have a slight cone shape to them. The skirt has a slightly bigger diameter than the head. But we've made them cylindrical, the cylinders are the same. So let's finish the job, and from there we'll have to do some prep to the cylinders as well. Let's go. We have prepped the cylinders, uh, well, these are actually the casings, which we've cut to shorten them. And now it's just a matter of putting this together. We cool the piston to shrink it, while this piece needs to be heated for it to expand. Then we insert the piston, and once everything cools down, we should have a nice and tight fit. Let's go! Okay, we've got everything ready, now it's assembly time. Over here I've got some liquid nitrogen, and over here I've got me some extremely flammable gas. Hopefully our calculations are correct and nothing cracks. But then we'll just try again if that happens. And now let's get to work, let's get these casings onto our pistons. Excellent. Put one in there. Now the other one. Quickly put some heat into it. Should have heated the metal slab. It's going to pull heat from the casings. I'd imagine. It's an old method, tried and tested. What? Spit on it if it bounces off, then the temperature is above 100 Celsius. Excellent. Okay, here goes nothing. Let it drip off. That went very well. I think we can put this away. And that is one done. Carefully like so. And here's something interesting that I'd like to point out. If we grab this piston that is connected to the conrod with a pin, see how easily it's moving around? Meanwhile, the piston we cooled down is seized. Now, why is that the case? Well, the pin is snug inside the conrod eyelet, but it moves relative to the piston. But in this case, when the temperature is as cold as it is, aluminum and steel have different thermodynamic characteristics, and the aluminum has shrunken so much that it has pinched the pin. It can't even move. But this is how we've chosen to modify these pistons, and hopefully they work. Okay, let's carry on. Let's 
through. Look here, guys, these have gotten warm, there is no longer any icing. Right here we've got bits of skirt poking out, which we're gonna cut off just to be on the safe side. We don't want these breaking off and rattling inside the cylinders. After the pistons have cooled off, we've measured them and realized that they are not perfectly cylindrically shaped. As in, this diameter is not the same as this one. Now we have to bore these out to remove the conrods. And the guys who are going to bore the engine block are also going to correct the pistons and make them the right shape. Check this out, guys, this is coming together very well. We fixed the pistons, they are now perfectly cylindrical, that's all good. And we've also bored out the cylinders. They are now pretty much the exact same diameter as these pistons. Their exact diameters are written on each one of them. Meanwhile, inside the cylinder, yeah, this is a super tight fit. Look at this, the piston is really snug. And that tells us that the compression figures are going to be massive. Okay, things are ready on this end. The pistons have been adjusted. Let's put this engine together. So the engine is slowly coming together, it's all looking good. All of the bolts on the lower end have been tightened. Not so much anything on the head side of things. But this was definitely easier to assemble than your usual sort of engine. Because here you don't need those sleeves that are used to squeeze the rings before inserting the pistons. These don't have rings, we just stuffed them in there with no trouble at all. We've bolted everything down and those have been the benefits so far. Okay, let's continue assembly and see where this whole thing goes. Check this out, guys. This is going well, the engine has been assembled, it turns over. And I think we shouldn't start it just yet. Instead, let's measure the compression first. To do that, we of course need to pour in some motor oil. And this is what we'll be using. This is their Ultra Series 5W50. It's a thicker one, which should make the engine somewhat happier. It'll form a thicker film and make for better compression, I'd imagine. I could be mistaken, though. But let's pour in the oil and administer a cold compression test before we start it, to get an idea about what's going on with the compression. Let's go! That's enough. It's pretty good, slightly above 9 kilos. Number 2. And that's enough. Oh, that's 10. Number 3, punch it. That'll do. That is a solid 10. Number 4. That's enough. And this isn't looking as good. Six and a half. So it's a bit lower number four, six and a half, but no big deal. I still think it might equalize. The compression is such that the engine should be able to happily start and run. Bear in mind that it hasn't been started yet, oil hasn't circulated around the system, and the oil film isn't quite as thick as it would be inside an engine that's running. But let's reinstall the spark plugs and get to the interesting part, which is starting it. We are ready, let it rip. It started, but it was running super quietly, which is a tad suspicious. Let's try again. That was a sign we need to fiddle around with it. It let it out. Keep cranking it. It's seizing up. We are done. Things are happening fast, I mean, the pistons are heating up. What else can it be? The piston heats up, expands, and the engine seizes with how tight the clearances are. 
Here's what we need to do. To prevent this from happening, I mean, there has to be some thermal clearance. So let's tear it down, increase the gap, reassemble the engine, and try starting it once again. Check this out, guys. We've cracked the engine open, and this is rather interesting. Three cylinders are in good working condition, while the fourth one has sustained a bit of damage. And it happened on the same side where there is more piston aluminum, if you will. It expanded more in that spot, but now we're going to carefully fix the issue. Though obviously we won't be able to remove the scratches completely. But we slightly increase the clearances, reassemble the engine, and take another crack at starting it. Let's go. Alright, so without trying to be too clever, we took a caliper and a bit of sandpaper, and are going to use it to remove some excess material. Maybe about five to six hundredths. And they should be ready for further testing. Let's go. Okay, let her rip. It started. But that is a lot of smoke. Now it's able to run for much longer. The engine actually works, and it stayed on for quite a bit more time. It wasn't seizing, we got it nice and warm. And now that it works, we of course need to fit it to a car and go out for a drive. Yeah, let's do just that and go out for a drive. We start the testing at our favorite incline which isn't all that easy to conquer. Oh wait, no, we're actually moving. There we go. I'm up, sweet. The tires in the engine were up to it, and that is pretty nice. It feels happy to run, which means that nothing is preventing the pistons from moving. We got the gaps right, and that is a nice thing. I'm amazed that it's even driving. And for so long, we warmed it up a couple of times. Vlad got up the hill. We were also revving it, and it still works. We are moving along nicely, look at that. This thing go is third gear. What's the matter? What just happened? As soon as I said everything is good, something went wrong. But what exactly? I'd say that went well. And the thing rips. You got those plumes of smoke coming from under the wheels. Is there a lot of smoke? Oh yeah, especially when you're on the gas hard. I've heard that noise before. And it's not as eager to pull. What was that? Why did it sneeze from the breather tube? Like really hard. Holy cow. Come on now. What the hell was that? You could literally hear it snapping. Yeah, you got bits of... Seriously, is it dead? I see fragments... What fragments? Fragments of something. Now we need to tear it apart. It was able to run for a while, and quite well. But as soon as I started revving it, as soon as the load increased, it began to stall, to hesitate to start back up. And then we started hearing noises that were extremely unhealthy. 
Knocking, rattling, rumbling and all of that. Then transitioning into something super nasty. Okay, let's tear it apart and see what's wrong with it. Right, guys, we have torn the engine apart, and the picture we see is very interesting indeed. So, look. Cylinder 1 is just totally gonzo. It was destroyed, so was the piston. You can definitely tell that there wasn't enough clearance. And as a result, the pistons were getting pinched. Number 1 was a particularly tight fit. At some point it got stuck, and then things started to fall apart. The conrod and the cylinder wall are also rooted. Obviously the piston. Everything was just torn to bits, into tiny pieces. What else do we see? Uh, well, all of the pistons were getting pinched, even though we increased the clearances. And I should say that we pretty much removed as much material as we could. Because if we were to go even further, there just wouldn't have been any compression. It would have barely been able to start at all. Anyway, so this was an interesting idea that we wanted to try and to show you guys. And now we can fully appreciate why compression rings and oil rings for that matter are a thing. You would have seen how much smoke this engine was producing. Also, we now know what thermal clearances are about. Materials are going to expand when you put heat into them. And at the end of the day, you always want for there to be that bit of clearance. If anybody ever wants to go for a tighter fit when rebuilding an engine, this is what you're going to end up with. So yeah guys, always mind the clearances. You saw it all for yourselves, that's it for this video, catch you guys later.